Hi, peoples. Uh, hey, what's up? Be thankful you can't smell through the camera. It's, it's kind of sticky. It's, it's very so hot bad. In there. It's. We it's, should be wearing gas masks, but you wouldn't be able to hear us if we were doing that. No. But to help with the heat, we have some very cool comics that you can relax with. Maybe sit outside, enjoy some some sun, get the real color out of the comics. Not that like weird fluorescent light thing. Um, but yes. We will start off this week with a new number one from DC Comics. Uh, Teen Titans number one is being rebooted for the Twitter generation here. Um, we got Will Pfeiffer and Kenneth Roquefort. Um, Kenneth Roquefort recently has done a bunch of Superman stuff, though mostly covers. He did a very short run, maybe a couple issues or so. A bit of Red Hood and the Outlaws. A bit of Red Hood and the Outlaws. He's the kind of guy that comes in, draws pretty stuff for a couple issues and leaves. Um... It's kind of like that. Will Pfeiffer's done some really great books, but, um, yeah, you know, you've got everybody kind of classic here except for Bunker. I don't know where this Bunker is coming from. He's, but the, he's a holdover from the last volume of Teen oh, Titans. He? Okay, yeah. you've got some Red Robin, some Beast Boy, some Wonder Girl action. Uh, should be pretty cool, new from DC. <laughs> Ooh, another really cool new series here out of uh, Image Comics. This is the first issue of Dark Engine. It's by Ryan Burton with art by John Bivens. Um, this sees a female savage-type warrior sent back in time to destroy the people who have wronged her creators. Uh, and then, you know, she fights some dinosaurs, and then things get weird. Like, really, really weird. Apparently there is some type of strange alchemical nonsense powering her that, uh... Well, let's just say it has some effects. Some side effects. Besides just turning her into an unstoppable killing machine. That's always good. Yeah. Um, also from Image Comics this week, the uh, much-anticipated... Second issue of The Wicked and Divine by Kieran Gillen and Jimmy McKelvey. We also have the number one back in stock, because I know there's a lot of you that didn't get here on time to get it. Um, and we have this special Chip Zardsky cover showing the love between the two creators. It takes this kind of love to make this kind of book. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Grant Morrison on the cover, right? Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah, so. uh-huh, yeah, with the Ziggy he, He's Stardust the bald thing. one, you know? He's the bald guy from, like, Britain. The bald comic guy. Right? Um, but yeah, this is following the pop stars who, uh, who are gods and who live for a time here on Earth before they die horribly. Um, but before that, they will have fame, fortune, and, well, you know, kind of whatever else comes with that. So A lot of drugs, I think. Probably. Knowing, knowing Grant Morrison. <laughs> wow. Um, enough of that trash talk. Uh, let's see what Will has to tell us about here. Hey guys, I'm about to blow your mind because this is my first ever trade paperback pick and it's not a Marvel or DC. It is from Images, Alex and Ada. Um, I love this book. It's Jonathan Luna and Sarah Vaughn and um, it, we have some individuals here in the store still but this collects the first story arc uh, set in a weird near future. Um, Alex, regular lonely guy, can't connect with humans but then he's given a robotic girl who's much more than a robot and um, it's weird, it's all about, uh, it's sci-fi, it's romance, it makes you think what's humanity and as he tries to explore a way to make Ada more human and give her some freedom, um, he gets into this whole conspiracy with this uh, underworld in this future world. I really love it, it's beautiful, it's unique, it's really cool storytelling. My first trade paperback, here's to you Jonathan Lennon and Sarah Vaughn. Uh, DC, I love Damien and I think he's awesome. I'm sorry he got killed off. This is Robin Rises Omega. This is a one-shot by a regular Batman and Robin uh, writer, um, Pete Tomasi, with guest artist by Adam Kubert. Um, so, uh, Batman has been searching the world. He's come into conflict with Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Ra's al Ghul, searching for the body of Damian Wayne and Talia. Now, what's he going to do with that? Is he going to try to resurrect it? Well, as the war between Batman and Ra's al Ghul heats up, all of a sudden, here comes the forces of Apocalypse. I'm sorry, Planet Apocalypse, Dark Side. I got my, sorry, DC and Marvel, I got screwed up there for just a second. Anyway, you know what I'm going for. Um, so the battle over Damien's far from over. Will it be resurrected? Tune in, folks. Uh, a huge issue, Uncanny X-Men 23. Uh, whatever happened to Charles Xavier, so I guess they're going to say dead is dead, and they're going to read his will. What did the world's greatest telepath and the leader founder of the X-Men leave, leave behind? Will this unite or further 
uh, separate the X-Men, probably further separate. Um, there's a lot in here. This is also, uh, Brian Bendis has done a great job redefining Dazzler, and um, it's just really going to have a lot of ramifications for the X-Men. Original Sin, 6, the final countdown is on to the big mystery. The Watcher was murdered, and all the po all the evidence seems to be pointing to uh, Nick Fury. In the last issue, you may have caught up... Um, after supposedly getting killed and then revealed he's this really old man and um, he's had this whole secret life. He was kind of like um, this, I don't know, this, this lone wolf again with Earth against all these alien forces and now it's going back to haunt him. The only person who may have witnessed all his crimes is the Watcher. Da -da -da -da. Plus it's also got a lot of cool stuff with those crazy weird villains like Dr. Midas and Exterminatrix from the original Marvel Boy series and the Orb. I mean, Jason Aaron's making the Orb look cool so you know he's a great writer. And my final book of the week is a great blast from the past. This is Savage Hulk, the second part of the story by uh, the great Alan Davis. Um, this is actually back in the time when the X-Men, the original X-Men in their cool kind of 60s costumes, um, go in search of Bruce Banner's help to help Professor X and the leaders involved. And as you can see, it's a lot of big green action as the abomination busts in. So those are my picks for the week. Back to you. Stay cool, Seattle. And thank you, Will. Um, I, I'm astounded he actually talked about a trade paperback. I mean, that was, I didn't think he read happen? those things. He's not a slave to the floppies anymore. Right. Um, anyway, there's a lot more stuff from Image this week, as per usual. We have the Deadly Class Trade, 1 through 6, by Rick Remender and uh, Wes Craig. No fool in this is like the best book on the rack. It's only $10. If you haven't bought this already, you have no excuse to spend your 10 measly dollars on this. It makes better use of the medium than just about any other book on the racks right now. Yeah, it's uh, amazing. The sequential art, just by virtue of being sequential art, in the way that it is, is just so... Oh my god. Chase oh scenes, god. badass Yakuza girls. What more do you want? Coney Island acid trips? There's that too. Yeah. Another really cool trade out here. Uh, it's the return, or you could say, resurrection of Doc Frankenstein. Dun, dun, dun. And I say that because, you know, the people who published it said that. Um, those, that publisher being the nigh-forgotten Burly Man comics. Held all by of, like, two comics. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, of course, of Shaolin Cowboy fame. Um, this is the brainchild of the Wachowskis and Steve Scroach. Scroshy? Scross? Scross. Yeah. Uh, the guy who did a lot of the Matrix storyboards other than Jeff Darrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> coincidentally. Right. Um, but this is just Frankenstein's monster going around throughout the ages, fighting everyone from werewolves to the church to cowboys. Uh, so. It's brilliant. There's only like five issues or so in there. Uh, it was one of my favorites from early 2000s. Uh, that, man, it's been like seven years. It's a little old, but it's awesome. It ages like fine wine. Um, very, very anticipated this week, the new graphic novel in color, yes, color, from... Full color, not just like five pages no, of it in the beginning, either. No, from Brian Lee O'Malley, the creator and superstar, uh, uh, artist of... Graphic novelist? Excuse me, graphic novelist. I guess when you re when you make so much money, you go from, like, comic dude to graphic novelist. And then if you don't make a lot of money, but the critics like you, you're a cartoonist. So there's these, like, fair, you know, fine lines. But anyway, Seconds uh, by Brian Lee O'Malley. Um, this is kind of, you know, slice of life fun stuff in the way that Brian Lee O'Malley does it. Um, basically... So it's existentially terrifying yeah, and will make yeah, you dread life. Yeah, there's this young girl, Katie, and the instructions for this book is write your mistake, ingest one mushroom, go to sleep, and wake anew. And that brings about all sorts of interesting things in this young girl's life. Um, she has this very strange kind of imaginary friendy thing that appears at the beginning, who's kind of creepy. Um, yeah, tries to murder her on multiple occasions. Yeah, it looks you know, like. just a few times. But uh, yeah, very cool. Already out of print, already sold out. So come in early, get your copy. Do mm -hmm. Yeah, might as well. Uh, Anna, what do you got for us? Oh, don't mind me. Just looking at this ravishing poster of Superman. Speaking of super people, I'm going to talk about a Marvel book today. This is a new She-Hulk from Charles Soule, Ron Wimberly. Uh, I'll be honest, I never picked up a She-Hulk book before Wimberly started doing the art on this one. I've never read She-Hulk, never read regular Hulk, Red Hulk, 
War Hulk, Barbarian Hulk. I've never read any of the Hulks before, but the Marvel's doing a really good job pulling some fringe artists, independent artists, to uh, bring in new readers like me. It's working. Good job, Marvel. Um, so if you like She-Hulk, if you like super strong action lawyers who are super smart and also can beat up people when they're stuck in a weird uh, psychotic episode, this is the title for you. Next up, new number one, Black Market, Frank Barbary and Victor Santos. Frank Barbary talked about all the time, Victor Santos worked on a cool crime noir book called Polar, Polar that I might have talked about a little couple months ago when it came out. This is about a mortician who's been disenfranchised as a super biological uh, scientist after some serious stuff went down with his brother and now he's turning the DNA of superheroes into a black market trade because it can cure all diseases. But it's not legal, so he's going underground with it, trying to get back his science chops. It's really cool. It's only four parts, so it's a super action packed read. We have another number one from Dynamite, Joshua Hale Fialkov, and a somewhat new artist, Matt Triano. He kind of has like a really detailed Prince Valiant type of look, but a lot more noir and shadowy. If you like okay. occults, demons, uh, yeah, lots okay. of violence, and Positions. This is the book for you. It's about a group of uh, people trying to fight devils. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's hyper, hyper detailed, hyper action-packed with lots of story. I like story in my comics because I'm old like that. This is a good one. And uh, hyper detailed, not as much uh, story like the Devilers, but the heart is there. It's the last issue of this run of the auteur, and if you buy this comic, you should probably just tear all these comics up and burn them, because this is all you really need to read this week. It's the reason that uh, James Callahan is called Barf Comics for a reason, because he illustrates Barf really, really well. And you won't be disappointed with the last issue, issue so pick it up. Thanks. Morgan doesn't approve of my fashion sense. I was like, this is what's hot with the young Asian girls on the street, but... Morgan said it wasn't a good look for me. I'm just gonna decline to comment here. Um, comics, everybody! Wow! Uh, what's this? Life with Archie? Archie! Yeah. Um, you might have heard via the internet that, uh, something big and important and shocking, maybe, was happening in this issue. That was a lie. Uh, it's totally <laughs> chill. You know, no one does. Everyone just sits down, drinks milkshakes, <laughs> right. reminisces about the good old days. It's really, 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 really cool. Absolutely. There's like six covers. Um, Fiona Staples, Adam Hughes, Ramon Perez, all celebrating the legacy that is Archie. Um, there's one more issue to go, but a lot happens in this issue, and I'm kind of uh, surprised as to how they're going to string it along for a second one. Um, but you know, they gotta they gotta make that Archie money, um, and there are no zombies yet in this book. Um, it actually leads in directly to after all. Yeah, Earth. directly. And the book of the weef. Weef. <laughs> the beef! No, this is not an ad for Radio Shack where Sam works, unfortunately. This is, this is Shaky Kane's new masterpiece, Captain Dinosaur, written by Keck W. Yeah, that's a pretty awesome writer name, I guess. Or, like, either that or you're like a Beastie Boys DJ. I honestly thought that name was a joke at first. No, I guess it's really a British It's people, a dude. Man. Yeah, it's a guy. Are you sure? Well, I mean, I, I meant dude as in human being. It's a person. But... Anyway, Shaky Kane recently did That's Because You're a Robot a couple weeks ago, which was brilliant, and if you didn't buy it, we still have it, and you should buy it. Um, but this is like the idea if all the really cool old Silver Age ads and comics actually had a story to them, and they came to life, and they had dino senses! Because what else do you need? Screw spider sense. I mean, you never know when a dinosaur... You know, I mean, like, what kind of sense did the dinosaurs have? I mean, were they very aware? I don't, I don't really know. For that, for that, are spiders really aware? What? What is that? I don't know. I have just I, cracked down Morgan's uh, brain here. And this comic will do the same to you, uh, you know, courtesy of Shaky Kane. So, oh, and look, there's... It's too hot for this kind of thinking. It is. As Morgan yeah. melts into a small puddle of... Uh, you know, existentialism over here. We will say goodbye and hope that your week is not too dreadfully hot and that you have AC where you work when we don't. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Okay, bye guys.